Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today I wanna to show you how to use Gmail. Now I'm gonna start from the basics of Gmail, but then I also wanna go through some more advanced tips and tricks in Gmail. So let's get started with Gmail on Teachers Tech today. I just wanted to mention that everything is timestamped down below in the description. So if you just click on the number, it will take you to that part of the video, save yourself a little bit of time. So let's start with just accessing our Gmail. And if you don't have one, signing up for one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead uh, up to the URL up here. And if you wanna access it quickly, you can just type in uh, mail.google.com. So if I start this, you can see the URL comes up, mail.google.com. This will take you to a sign-in place. Uh, I have my account, my demo account that I'm using, but you can, if you go to use another account, you can see that you can create an account here that if you don't have one. So I'm just gonna go and sign in with my demo account right here. So I'm signed in to my demo account here that I'm gonna be working from today in this tutorial. Uh, if you wanna kind of move around from the different suites, if you're new to uh, Google, if you take a look at the Google app launcher up here, the Google apps right here. So if we click on this, you can see, you can go to from Google Drive. If you wanna learn about Google Drive, I have a different video on that. I'll put the link down below uh, by Gmail right here you can just click on it and any of these you can change the order of these but it shows all your google apps so when you click on it it will go to it all right let's get started first of all with just creating and sending emails in gmail to compose an email in gmail just go to the top left hand corner where you see this pencil go ahead click on it this window opens up here. Now, you don't have to keep it this size. If you look, we do have a minimize. Uh, you can just keep it open and hit this. It's still there, just in the bottom left-hand corner. I'll click on it. You can maximize it even larger, so you can be typing in this. You don't have to type in that smaller window. And you can go ahead and close it, and it's gone. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, open it up one more time, and I will go to this one so you can see a little bit better. This is where you put the send to. So I'm gonna send it to another demo account that I have here. I wanna point out right here, uh, CC and BCC, because th these are important things to know. Uh, with the CC, so if I click on CC, and if I was putting someone else's name uh, down here like this, when they get the email, they're going to see, they can see everybody on the list that it got sent to. Uh, a lot of times you want to protect the privacy of other people's emails and you don't want everybody to see the list who was attached on that. That's where you need to click on BCC. So then if I was sending it this way, they're only going to see the email sent to themselves. They're not going to see who else I sent the email to. So that's an important thing uh, to know when you're working with CC and BC, yeah, BCC. So I'm just going to close that here. I'm going to put a subject line. I'm going to keep this all pretty simple. I'll just say hello. We write our message. I'm going to say how are you? And you notice that it's filling this in this up already. So if I hit tab, uh, it goes to the end. And I'll show you how you can turn that on and off a bit later. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm going to just sign it my name. Now you can go ahead and change how this looks here too. So uh, if you go uh, down below here, you can see that there is different size of text you can change it to. So you can go back and highlight it at any time and change it like this. Uh, you can go through bold and you can kind of set up what you want and how you wanted it uh, aligned. So you can go and check all these things. I'm not gonna cover a lot of this. I just wanna point these out. You can edit these. Uh, you can see I can strike that out and go back to normal. The main things I want to type uh, talk about uh, at the very bottom are some of these uh, tools that are overlooked. So yes, this is a, I'm sending a simple message here. When do I want to send it? I can actually pick a time that I want to send it right from in Gmail. So if I go uh, here where it says send, if I was just sending it, I would hit send. But if I drop down here, I can schedule a send. So I can click on it. When do I want to send it? Do I want to be tomorrow, this afternoon, Monday? I can even pick a time. And then when I'm done, it will go out on the time I schedule. So maybe you're writing your stuff up and then you send it out later. Uh, just going across here, you can see there's the formatting options. Uh, if I turn that off, 
it goes away like that, keeps it open, but attaching files. So I can go ahead uh, to my, uh, you know, uploading things and I'm just gonna go to this demo one. I could grab an image and open it up just like this and I can add a picture uh, to this. You can see how it's attached here. Now I'm just gonna change the size of my window here. I'm just gonna minimize this, uh, move this over. I just wanna point out, I have some files on the side here, PDFs, Word, you can you can attach all these. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drag. You can see if I just drag things over, it becomes attached on this. So Word documents, uh, videos I can be dropping into. So these are all different types of uh, files that we have from pictures, PDF, docs, videos. Now, the important thing to know is that as soon as you get over 25 megabytes in size it won't automatically send that from Gmail there's a limit to this uh, and what happens so if I grab this video right here that I know it's over a hundred and drag it over notice that it says large shot uh, files must be shared with Drive so what's gonna happen here uh, I'll say okay got it it's loading this up uploading this to Google Drive and this is where it's important to understand how Google Drive works uh, and as I mentioned, I have that other video, but it will upload this to Google Drive. And when I send it, it's gonna ask for what permissions do I want because it's coming out of my Google Drive. So I'll show you this after this uploads. So it's uploaded here and I haven't sent this yet. So it's not asking me to change any of the permissions. I'm just gonna make this larger here. Uh, I just wanna point out, you can delete any of these too. If you hit the X, if I didn't want something to be sent, I can go ahead, hit the X and it's not gonna be sent, taken from there. Just before I send this, I just wanna point out a few other things. You can see you can insert links. So if I was clicking on this and I wanted uh, maybe send a web page to my web page, uh, this is text to be displayed. So I'd be like this, uh, teacher's tech for what I wanna write here. And then this is where I can put the address uh, to it. So if I just put my address in like this and I can hit okay, and then it goes to it and they're gonna get a link. So even though it's written there, they're gonna get that link to it. Uh, this is uh, just some insert emojis, pretty simple. This is gonna insert from Google, Google Drive. So if you have something in your drive, those large files are ready, you can go ahead and click on it and this is where it's gonna go through. This is the video that I attached already and it's been uploaded to my Google, Google Drive. So that's why I can see it there. Uh, just going across, we can see we can insert photos here. We can insert a few different ways so I can upload just like I did before or I could use albums. I don't have any on this one or uploads or even a, I could take it from the web somewhere if I had a URL of that uh, photo. Uh, I'm not going to upload one of those uh, but this right here is confidential mode. So this is another important thing to know. So if I click on this, look at this option again, this is overlooked by a lot of people. So uh, what do I want to have happen with this? This is kind of adding more security to this. Uh, do we want this to expire? We can have this expire in a week, this message. And then even with passcodes, whether it's gonna be uh, sent uh, through text or not with text here. So you can set that on it to add more security to the emails that you sent. And lastly, over here, you can see insert signature. Uh, this I'll talk about a little later because I wanna show you a special way I tip to get a really good uh, email signatures and I'll show that in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, if we have everything, uh, we can hit send. I just wanna note though, uh, look what happens when I close this and be like, oh, you accidentally closed this. Uh, and you think, oh, I have to retype that email again. Well, don't worry about that because it automatically gets saved in drafts here. So if I go back to drafts, you can see it's everything here is here with the uh, with all the attachments. So if I go ahead, open it back up, there it is. I'll just maximize everything is here. So it automatically saves it. If you delete it accidentally, don't worry about it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hit send. And this is where I'm talking about, it's asking for permission because that one file is coming from Google Drive. Uh, so if I go, do I wanna share it with this one person here? Do I wanna give them view, comment, or edit? So that's up to you what you would decide. Or turn link sharing on. Uh, because you have to think, is this person gonna be able 
to see this file? If he can, this person send this file to someone else? Do you want this to be shown? Uh, that's part of the permissions, how Google Drive works. So you can set those up, but you can go ahead and uh, turn these on the way you want. I'll just keep it with one person and I hit send and this gets sent off to them. If you ever want to check on the emails that you sent, just go to sent right here. And then you'll be able to uh, take a look at all the different ones that you've sent in the past. Now, I want to give you a very important power tip here to make you more efficient in Gmail. And I'm going to go ahead and create, compose a new one. And I'm going to maximize this. Now I've talked about uh, sending it to, you know, I've shown in the previous example, I can send it here. And the reason these people are coming up, they're connected to my domain, but I can type in uh, more people here and type in their few in their uh, their full emails in here too. Now, if I had 30 people in a group, I would don't want to be putting this in each time. It gets pretty slow. What you can do is create a group uh, titled one thing and add all the people in it so you can just type the one thing uh, one name and it will just pop up in your email so let me show you how to do this I'm just gonna go ahead and close this you need to go to contacts for this and contacts over on the right here you can click on it and I'm gonna go ahead and hit get started because I don't have anybody added to my contacts with this new account here I can add people to my contacts here so I can go ahead and hit create account now, if you already have a CSV list, you can even upload it here. So I can create a single account like this. If I click on it and I just fill in the information here and then I'm gonna have a contact. If I go to multiple contacts, this is where you can uh, just keep adding names here uh, and separate it by a comma. You can just go through the list and add multiple people. But if you have something, you can import a CSV or a V card file, you can import it right from here. So go ahead and you can add some contacts. What I'm gonna do is kind of show you a different way uh, if you already have them connected in your domain. I'm gonna create a label first. So I'm just gonna call this uh, demo, uh, I'll call this demo group. And I'm gonna hit save. And you can see we have this label here. I'm gonna click on it. There's nobody in this uh, label that I have. I wanna add people to this. And even though I haven't added anybody to my contacts yet, if I type Ashton, since he's in my domain, it comes up. And what I can do now is uh, if you can, I can add to contacts. So it's a quick way I can add this person to contacts or I can add them right to the demo group. So I click on this and it goes to demo group here. So if I click over here on demo group, there is Ashton and it also automatically put him in contacts when I added him to the group. So uh, let's go here. I'm gonna go and add another name here just like I did before. And I'm not gonna make this a big, uh, a big group because the example, even with two people, will show. So now I have two people in this group. So what I'm gonna do now is go back over to my email and I'm gonna hit compose. And let me make this larger here. And now when I start type demo, start typing demo group, click on it, and it will go through. So if, if I, again, make sure I have the right one, you can see demo group has Ashton Keegan in it, a click in it, and those are the different names on it. And I can give it to the subject. That's gonna save you a lot of time if you're sending out. Now, I just wanted to make a note though, uh, you can't BC, uh, BCC this group to people. So that might be important to know if you're trying to keep those emails uh, confidential of it. So, but this can save you time if you're sending it to the whole group. So take advantage of creating that uh, group, that label inside your uh, contacts. So I'm gonna to go to another power tip right away and that is creating a signature in your Gmail. So what I mean by that, it's gonna be at the bottom of your Gmail, automatically put there each time. So it could be as simple as your name and contact information. Maybe you have a favorite quote and it will be sent each time and you don't have to type it out. So I have a shortcut right here I could click on and if you don't have that, go up to your gear, the settings, and go see all settings and under the general tab here, scroll down towards the bottom and you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see a signature right here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit create new and I'm gonna call this email one because you can have multiple signatures and you can change them around. I'm gonna hit create here. Now you can see email one is created. I can always delete it if I wanted to and I'm just gonna put this uh, information here. I'll just put my name and teachers 
tech like so. And I could go through and you notice how I can go through and if I wanted things underlined, I, I could add links, I could insert an image right through here and depending on how I line it so you can set it up. And you're not quite done yet. Uh, notice, is this for for new email use? Do you want a signature? You have to pick which one you want. Do you want it on reply? Sure, you could put it on reply or maybe you don't want it on reply, depending on how you have it set. And insert signature before quoted text, you know, it, uh, it remove the lines that it precedes it. So you can click that in, try it and see which way you like. Make sure you hit save changes at the bottom here. So if I hit save, if I go back up to compose, notice now I have this already in here. So I don't have to type this. So it could be my, again, could be my phone number or even more uh, in there. And I could go through and just type and hit send. And I don't have to have that end part. I do want to point out though, uh, I just have a different window I want to show you here. If you want, I have a different account compose. If you want to have something maybe that looks like this, even where you can do more and do some more customization customization to your signature, and this is for free, I have a different video that will walk you through creating a signature like this. Really simple to use, but I'll put the link down below uh, for that. All right, let's move on to our next point with Gmail. And I have a third power tip for you when you're sending your emails. And I'm gonna go ahead and compose, make a quick one really quick. And I'll maximize that, send it away, and I'll just call this test and test and hit send. Notice at the bottom, send message, sent, undo. I can undo our view message here. That's gonna go away after I have so much time to undo that message. So right now, by default, it's set at five seconds. So maybe you want a little bit more time that you can undo these messages before it's sent. And you can see message was sent. Now, if I wanna change that, go back up to your settings again and go to see all settings. And right here, uh, towards the top here, you can see undo send. Send cancellation period after, so it's five seconds. You can change this. So you can change this up to 30 seconds. If you want a little bit more time to maybe you sent an email and you're like, no, 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 I didn't mean to send that. To cancel that, change that to 30 seconds and it will delay it by that. And then you can go do and undo that send. So that could save you maybe some embarrassment or something that you didn't mean to send somebody and you can undo it still. Let's talk a little bit about receiving emails. Now, when someone sends you an email, and I just sent myself one from a different account here, you can see I haven't opened this one because it's not grayed out. This one that when I started this uh, email today was red because I clicked on it like this and it was opened. And so if I go back to my inbox, that one's grayed out. I haven't opened this one. As soon as I click on it and go back to my inbox, you can see it's grayed out. Now there's a few other things I can do to this right away too. So if you go over to the side, you notice that there's archive. So this doesn't mean delete. This means that it's going to be placed in your in one of the labels. And if I go down, I'll open this up. And if you look at all mail, that's where it's going to be placed in. It's not going to delete it. So if I go ahead and click on archive, uh, if I go over to all mail, uh, this is going to be in here. Here it is right through here. I can actually drag this back out of here. So if I go back in, I can drag it back in and it brings it back into the inbox. But the archive does not delete it. There is the delete. If you want it gone, go ahead and hit delete like so. But remember at the very bottom, you do have a trash here and you can go ahead if you want to, uh, if you want to put it back, you could empty the trash now. But as soon as I click, you can, or I can delete it forever. You can see that there's options of reporting spam uh, through here that I can change around. So, but I can move this back into my inbox as well this way. So you can drag things all around. Now I can also uh, mark as unread. So if I, as soon as I do that, it puts it back. So maybe I want to make sure that it uh, stays uh, white. I can make it unread here or mark it as red here. And I can also snooze this. So if I want to be reminded of this email, I don't want to read it yet. Uh, later today, I want it to uh, remind me, come back. I can pick a date and time where it will come back if I don't have time to look at it. So those are some of the quick things that you can do when you you get an email, you can also click on it and reply to it. So with reply, 
right here at the bottom. Uh, I like these smart replies. Uh, what they do is use AI to think what you want and you can go ahead and click on one of these like this and it will just go ahead and get ready to write something back uh, from it. So I could go ahead and send it back from there with a smart reply. If I don't want to, I can hit delete here uh, or just hit reply and type whatever I want uh, here. So I said, I'll just say yes on this one to keep it simple and I can send it back and that person will be getting and I have a thread starting right away. I do want to point out forwarding here. If we go forward, uh, this is where I can send it to somebody else from here. So now I can send it to someone else in my account and they're going to get that first email from it. So I have a little bit of a thread happening. I'm going to do some replying and get back to this email. So as I mentioned, I have a little bit of a thread happening here. Look at the number five right here. That means the messages that are in this. So it's a group of messages. And if I click on it, open it up, you can kind of see the conversation here. And the person even sent me a, uh, a photo here. I just want to point out with, with anything that gets sent to you from email, you can download it to your computer. Notice when I clicked on it, uh, you have different options. You can open it up like this. At the top, I have uh, print. I can save this to my drive. So if I click on this, this will actually add it to my Google Drive and it'll be stored there or download it on the computer. And you can always check for more options wherever you want to save it to your Google Photos too. So I'm just going to close off that. But uh, you can see that you get those, uh, you can open up different things as you, whenever you see those three little dots too. All right, so on any of these, you can go back at, at different ones through the thread and you can go through and pick these more options right here. And you can kind of, you can see how I can even block somebody here. I could delete the messages, message show uh, original. I could even translate it if I need it to on this one. But I have this conversation. I'm gonna go over to my inbox. Here's a tip about receiving emails, especially in conversation. Do you want it to be all grouped like this into one message or do you want separate ones? Because you can go up to your settings again and if you go to see all settings under the general tab here, if you go and find your conversation uh, one, so as you go through, uh, we'll take a look for it. We have conversation view right here. So if I go turn it off, and now I can save it. Make sure you keep on saving. It will force you to save it if you try to leave it here. But now all of a sudden my messages have been separated on this. So you can see now it used to be just that one message. It's being broken up into the replies into the different messages right through here. So depending on how you want it, you can change that view of conversation. Let's say someone sends you an email and you're on vacation and you don't want to feel like this person's ignored. You want to make sure that they uh, know that they got the message. You can set up an autoresponder to this. And if you go back up to the settings up top here and click on see all settings. Now there's lots of different settings in here. I'm not covering them all in this tutorial here today. So make sure you do take a look at all the different ones that you can do. Uh, but at the very bottom, there is vacation responder. So if you know you're going to be away for a specific date, you can turn this on and you can uh, give it a first date and a last date. So maybe it's a week or so that you'll be gone or maybe a couple days. You set the dates, you'd give this a subject and you can write a message. So a person would send you a message and then it would automatically say, hey, I'm on vacation. I'll be back at this time uh, just to let them know that they've uh, that the message has been received and that you're just away at that time. So take advantage of of the vacation responder in Gmail. So now I want to talk about organization in your Gmail. And at first, let's talk about your labels. Labels are on the left over here. I made a little bit more real estate and if, in case you're out of room, any of these can drag up and down. So I, I just brought this down so I'd have more room to open up my label. So these are all my different labels that were made already for me. So uh, I talked about snooze before in an email. Well, anything I snoozed would go here. Uh, my all mail is a label. Scheduled is a label. So I can go check on those and they'll be under those labels. Now star is a very easy one to help you stay organized. So how you can use star, if I click on any message like this, you can see I have this star option right up there. 
and I can click on it like this. And I can go back to my inbox, you can see it adds the star. But I can also add, add the star here too. So it just makes it, so if something's important, if I click on start, it'll take those messages and put it there. So a very simple way to do this. And here's a quick tip inside your settings and I keep going back to these settings if you scroll down a bit you can see that you can have more stars and if I was going to I can drag more things up in place of the different ones that they give I'll just drag a few examples and notice if I try to leave it's something changed and your changes will not be saved I'm going to make sure I save that and now if I click on these here so if I'm going to open this back up and I click on my star here notice how it changes so it goes through so in each spot so if i go here and just keep clicking on it it changes through all the different options that i've chosen so you could have different stars for it but everything still of those will still be placed in your star so you can change it off on to, into different ones so a little tip there so again these are other labels let's go ahead and create some more to make it more personalized so if i go ahead and create a label and i'm just going to call this demo and it's a top level label i could put labels under labels and hit create so now i have this one called demo i could even make a few changes after if i want to edit it you can see or remove it i'm going to add a color to it let's make this one blue like this and I'm going to make one more label and I'm just going to call this demo uh, 2 like so and I'm going to add a color to this one also and it's going to be this green one so now what you can do uh, there's different ways you can label your emails these labels can be applied in different ways so I'll just start from an email so from an email you can see that we have our label here if I click on it, I can click where I want it to go. So I have demo one, demo two, and I can apply it. And so as soon as I apply it, I have this label right here put onto it. And I can delete these labels too. So, But I'm going to go over to demo and that one is in there. Now, if I go back to inbox, I can drag them over to any place. So I could drag them over and I label them just like this. I can label these with multiple labels so they just don't have to go to one spot they can be in multiple spots because one email might belong in different categories when you're searching for them the other thing is you can do what you can do you can take an email from here and drag it in so now you don't see it it's not in your inbox anymore it's not gone it's going to be in just that one label so you can take things out of your inbox and make sure they're organized by the label remember if you look into uh, your all mail everything is in your all mail all labels all drafts everything like that uh, I'm gonna make one more label here so I'm gonna hit create new so I'm gonna call this demo 3 I just wanted to point out you how when you're nestling under you can go create and you can see how you can even organize organize it further like this so that's using with demos on it so there's different ways to apply them from dragging to uh, adding labels in here now I just want to point out a tip I have a different video that even goes deeper into this you can actually create filters that if somebody sends you an email it will actually go to that label automatically and it will do that perform that task for you you just have to set it up so I'm going to put a link to the filters email uh, filters video that I have it's uh, it will save you a lot of time in keeping everything organized let's talk a little bit about customization here and the one thing I just want to point out and I'm going to go back to the settings and see all settings is the labels that I just talked about uh, talked about and if I look at labels you can see where you can show or hide so if you look on the left hand side if you don't want to see something there if I don't want sent there you can go and hide it and it's taken away so you can modify these and where it shows up so take a look and you can see here are the different ones that I just created uh, with the demo ones now I'm gonna go back uh, a step here and to settings and I just want to point out this right here these this way is an easy way to customize what you want it used to be you had to go to see all settings all the time but you can go change quickly what you want your Gmail to look like so 
uh, depending on the density of it and you can see how that changes you can choose your theme so if I go view all it will go through and pick which one if I hit save you can see how quickly it will change so they've made it really easy to uh, to customize this I do want to point out uh, too we have our inbox do you want you know your stars to come in first your unread your uh, important first so you pick the way uh, you want this set up and I mentioned the conversation view everything how it goes into the settings you can uh, see that the email threading I could just click on it here and it will get to it here so it's very easy to change your customizations to get things looking the way you want in Gmail now the last thing I just wanted to point out today and I'm gonna actually turn it back uh, to a very simple one uh, to view just it's a little easier to see is this on the side with the chat and I'm not going to go deep into this again I have a different uh, video about Google chat and rooms and everything Google uh, the chat on the side allows you to instantly chat so it's not email but you can chat with people uh, back and forth through typing uh, you just can go ahead start a chat it's going to click onto it and you can chat back and forth I do want to mention the rooms so what the rooms do and in case you don't have this in your Gmail this is rolling out to everybody soon this will be updated and how it looks but if we go and create a room uh, again check out my video for this we can go ahead and create a spot where we can collaborate on files together inside Gmail or you can use it in chat too so you could be a place uh, just for a good collaboration and you have it right in Gmail and lastly at the bottom is meet so Google meet uh, allows you to start new meetings here so we go ahead and click on new meeting and we can start a, uh, a, a Google Meet here and do a video conferencing all this accessible through your Gmail and up at the very top notice where it says active we can change uh, how our status is by quickly changing this so there is a lot more to learn about uh, Gmail and there's more tips I can give you and I will give you uh, hopefully this got you started today with maybe some things you didn't know about organizing your Gmail let me know what else you want to learn Thanks for watching this week on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.